Three's Company, the iconic sitcom that graced our screens from 1977 to 1984, remains etched in our memories both for its comedic brilliance and the off-screen drama revolving around Suzanne Somers' departure. Portraying Chrissy Snow, Summers skyrocketed to household fame, yet her exit from the show was marred by controversy, negotiations, and public statements that left fans and industry insiders utterly bewildered. Suzanne Summers' portrayal of Chrissy Snow in Three's Company captivated audiences with her endearing yet slightly ditzy character. Her impeccable comedic timing and undeniable on-screen chemistry with co-stars John Ritter and Joyce DeWitt played a crucial role in the phenomenal success of the show. Suzanne Summers truly became an integral and beloved part of the ensemble. However, what unfolds when one of the show's most prominent stars chooses to depart from the company? Venture into the captivating world of corporate intrigue, where the mysterious exit of Suzanne Summers from a colossal corporate titan is poised to be revealed. Prepare yourself, for the behind-the-scenes events will undoubtedly captivate you, an astounding revelation that challenges belief. Transport yourself back in time to the late 70s and early 80s, when television screens were graced by the presence of the legendary sitcom Three's Company. Led by the charismatic trio of John Ritter, Suzanne Somers, and Joyce DeWitt, this sensational show reigned supreme from 1977 to 1984 as the undisputed monarch of television entertainment. The enchanting synergy between these stars was simply magical. However, beneath the glitz and glamour, a fascinating duality thrived. Although may have shared the same wave of fame, Summers, one of the stars, possessed a distinct motivation. With candid honesty, Suzanne Summers disclosed her humble beginnings as a poor girl who unexpectedly ascended the ladder of success. Emerging from a background of limited means, where opportunities remained distant dreams, she wholeheartedly embraced the winds of celebrity, fortune, and acclaim that carried her away. Unapologetically, she shared her transformative journey with the world, declaring her remarkable passage from rags to riches as a testament to the limitless potential of the human spirit. She said, I grew up poor and I live a good life. $19.95 x 10 million, so kind of do the math. We're probably at 15 million now. Ritter and DeWitt epitomized the perfect blend of fun and craftsmanship. They possessed an unwavering passion for writing, evoking laughter and captivating audiences on stage. Their ultimate objective was simple, to entertain. Ritter, akin to a Hollywood sweetheart, embodied the essence of kindness and humility, much like the legendary Tom Hanks. Adored by all, Ritter and DeWitt never lost sight of their profound gratitude for the success they achieved. It was never about the riches. They fervently pursued their craft for the sheer love and unparalleled joy it brought into their lives. In contrast, Suzanne Somers had a distinct experience. The media relentlessly focused on her alluring persona, ultimately impacting her perspective. Chris Mann, the renowned author of Come and Knock on Our Door, A Hers and Hers and His Guide to Three's Company, elaborated on this compelling narrative. Joyce wanted to be known as an actor and not a celebrity, and a lot of that feeling grew out of a Newsweek cover story. Suzanne had her own photo shoot before or after the shoot of the trio, which John and Joyce were very uncomfortable with having Suzanne being featured. She had other shots of her in front of the pink or blue screen in a nightie. Apparently, one of those shots was superimposed over the image that Newsweek had of the three of them, and that created a lot of tension behind the scenes. It also further conflicted Joyce about doing publicity because she felt lied to. John Ritter himself seemed less than pleased with the situation. It seemed that he and DeWitt were both inclined to dismiss the matter, believing that Newsweek was merely trying to generate controversy for the sake of sales. However, the situation took a turn when Suzanne Summers and her husband, acting as her manager, insisted on a significant increase in pay. They sought to raise her salary from $30,000 per episode to $150,000, along with a 10% share of the show's profits, essentially aligning with Ritter's earnings. Ritter and DeWitt emphasized that the issue was not solely about achieving equality, it was more about the manner in which Suzanne Somers pursued her pay raise. By taking her negotiations and salary demands public, she put pressure on the network, leaving Ritter and DeWitt feeling betrayed by this approach. By the end of 1980, Ritter had reached a breaking point and refused to collaborate with Summers any longer. The situation escalated when Summers publicly aired her contract issues. In an attempt to reconcile, Ritter proposed a one-on-one -on -one conversation, 
devoid of representatives and definitely without involving her husband. Regrettably, Summers declined the offer. According to Chris Mann's book, negotiations began in the summer of 1980, but quickly stagnated. A meeting among Alan Three's company producer Mickey Ross and Summers ended disastrously. Subsequently, Suzanne missed a show, citing a rib injury as the cause. After her return, she missed yet another show. Considering that there had already been a writer's or actor's strike in Hollywood, the show was already in a precarious position. Her actions alienated many others on the show. Ultimately, the way she handled the entire situation in the press proved to be the final straw. John Ritter seemed to handle her desire to become the next Farrah Fawcett with remarkable finesse. R and DeWitt were deeply hurt by the entire situation. Initially, they were inclined to forgive the incident with the Newsweek cover. However, when Suzanne Summers began taking credit for the show's success, it crossed a line for them. Summers' demands were relentless, essentially leading her to go on strike until her terms were met. A compromise was attempted. She would appear in short tag scenes in some episodes without the rest of the cast present on set. Eventually, the producers had no choice but to part ways with Summers, resulting in her departure from the show. Despite this setback, the show continued to thrive after new actresses were brought in until its conclusion in 1984. Sanna Summers embarked on a multifaceted journey in her career. In the vibrant 1980s, she graced the stages of Las Vegas with her performances. In the lucrative 1990s, she achieved remarkable success as the spokesperson for the revolutionary Thighmaster, amassing considerable wealth in the process. Not only that, but she also brought joy to the hearts of U.S. servicemen and women stationed overseas through her entertaining acts. Summers reached the height of popularity in the same decade by starring in the beloved TGIF sitcom Step by Step, which captivated audiences for an impressive six seasons. After more than 30 years of not speaking to each other, Suzanne Summers and Joyce DeWitt finally reconciled. It was in 2012 when they came together for Summers' web series, Breaking Through. Prior to this, Suzanne Summers had already reconciled with John Ritter in 2003. Tragically, just days after their amends were made, John Ritter passed away suddenly from aortic dissection on September 11, 2003. Regably, Suzanne Summers also passed away on October 15th, leaving us in sorrow. According to a heartfelt statement by her longtime publicist, R. Curry Hay, Suzanne Summers peacefully departed in the early morning hours at her home. Despite enduring an aggressive form of breast cancer for over 23 years, Suzanne persisted. During her final moments, she was surrounded by her husband, Alan, her son, Bruce, and her immediate family. They had gathered to celebrate her 77th birthday on October 16th, but instead, they will commemorate her remarkable life. In this difficult time, they expressed their deepest gratitude to her millions of devoted fans and followers who held her dearly in their hearts. On her Instagram, Suzanne Summers revealed in July that her battle with breast cancer had resurfaced. She wrote, As you know, I had breast cancer two decades ago, and every now and then it pops up again, and I continue to bat it down. I have used the best alternative and conventional treatments to combat it. This is not new territory for me. I know how to put on my battle gear and I'm a fighter. The untimely demise of Suzanne Summers deeply moved her fans, who conveyed their sincerest condolences to her grieving family. A fan comment read, Farewell, my love. You were a favorite for many of us growing up in the 80s, 90s back in the day. You made me laugh when I was feeling down and you looked beautiful even in old age. Another fan said, Oh, Suzanne, you were a true inspiration to so many. You were a beautiful, intelligent, talented, amazing, caring, strong, and fun person. Rest easy, beautiful lady. Suzanne Summers' departure from Three's Company serves as a reminder of the complexities of the entertainment industry, where artistic contributions often intersect with business negotiations. While Summers' exit was undoubtedly controversial, it also paved the way for discussions about fair compensation and the value of actors in a show's success. Today, as the industry continues to evolve, the legacy of Three's Company and the lessons from Summers' departure remain relevant. But what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that Suzanne Summers should have been treated better and been given a more fair negotiation? Or do you think the producers of Three's Company made the right decision for their show at the time? What other lessons can be taken from this situation? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. 
And if you ever need to satisfy your gossip cravings or simply want to know what to anticipate from your favorite stars and movie series, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And remember, I love you guys so much. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video. See you all in the next video.